Okay, again, YouTube. CPM Rex 121. It's a extremely high end, high wear resistant steel. Um, I only know of one other maker that's used it in a folder. That's Jake Hoback. He made a folder and he posted it up on the USN. Beastly folder it has. Um, last year I got this um, CPM Rex Mule from Farad. Farad Mare, who's based out in the UK. Um, he said he was going to do a project that involved this steel and everybody was eager to see what he would come up with. Uh, the steel is, he says, about 68 um, Rockwell at on the flats which probably comes out to around 70 at the edge because it's a lot thinner. This blade is very thick. Um, it's got the uh, hot rolled finish on it. I have reprofiled the edge to about 28 degrees inclusive or 26, 28. It's as low as I could get on my wicked edge. And let me tell you, this thing is sharp. It the edge is so sticky, it's scary. As a matter of fact, um, when I got it last year, the first day I unboxed it, I cut myself, <laughs> and it wasn't um, it wasn't reprofiled down to this edge yet. But the steel had the, the steel came pretty sharp. It's very hard to get. A mirror polish on it I tried it it took me about about half an hour on the wicked edge to get it down to this angle whereas it would take me maybe five minutes five ten minutes on any other steel or any of the other steels I've tried to reprofile um, it is a very very wear resistant steel um, Farad says it's got 36-38% um, carbide volume. It's got 10% tungsten. According to the data sheet he sent me, or I guess this is a certificate certificate of authenticity, um, carbon's at 3.4%, chromium's at 4%, vanadium's at 9.5%, Tungsten at 10%, cobalt at 9 molybdenum at 5 It is very hard to work with. Um, Farid says he buys 200 ceramic belts at a time, and he goes through all of them, or he's gone through more than one batch of those, trying to grind these knives. And he announced... Uh, shortly, well not shortly, it actually took a while, and I don't blame him, that he was going to make a folder out of that steel, his K2 version. And I got on that list, and after a while of waiting, I got this in the mail yesterday. Um, I didn't do a video on it right away because it was kind of late. Uh, this is Farad's K2. It is a big ass folder. It's got the same um, hot rolled finish on the blade, on the blade flats. It's got the spider hole. I guess that's licensed from Spyderco. And it's got titanium, I guess, scales. Or it's a titanium liner lock. It's got a ceramic nitride. Let me see here. Yeah, silicon nitride ceramic detent ball. Um, it's got heat treated beryllium copper pivot. He said he calls it a pivot screw spring, but the the pivot's pretty beefy, and it's, it's constructed with just two screws. Well, apart from the clip, but it's got one big standoff slash spacer over here. Um, titanium clip, um, 6AL4V titanium for the frame, and it is big. It's a big knife. Um, overall, it's 
I believe 9 and 13 16 in length. The blade is about 4.5 inches from tip to the start of the handle. And it is pretty thick blade. He says he grinds these to about 80% and then stress relieves them in his kiln for 24 hours um, he says he needs to leave the blades fairly thick because it will it will warp and he's had some warp um, during the heat treat um, I haven't tried to do anything with this yet apart from cut paper but with this mule I've batoned wood through it, I've whittled with it, um, there had, I haven't, I haven't experienced any kind of edge deformation or chipping. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the steel's brittleness being that high hardness, but so far, man, this steel is a beast. It's, or I should say beastly. It's extremely wear resistant you can take the edge down pretty thin and although I don't know how much thinner you can get it considering the thickness of the blade itself but as far as damage to the edge I don't think that's a worry unless you maybe drop it on concrete floor or tile floor but I have never actually I almost dropped this the first day I got it when I got cut and I got cut because I tried to catch it. Stupid me. But it didn't hit the floor. So, anyway, this is the K2. And for comparison's sake, here is a Spider Core military, a Titanium military. My, I mean, you, anybody who's seen my page or my videos has probably heard of this or Solo's videos. He did. Um, uh, Solo Knife Reviews did this for me. He etched, he etched the blade. Uh, he uh, he forced the patina on it because it's CPM M4. I transferred the blade over, or I should say, I transferred the scale over. Um, we blasted the clip, but as a comparison in size, they're not that much different lengthwise. But if this is how, I guess, I would say big my palms are. Um, my fingers aren't that long, but I do have, uh, I guess, a big enough hand that I can com almost completely um, close up on the handle of a military. The K2, yeah, it comes out a lot longer. I wouldn't say a lot longer. I guess the, the grip makes it set a little bit more forward um, more closer to the pivot or right on top of the pivot compared to the military which the thumb ram kind of sets your grip about an about an inch from where the blade starts this one it's a pretty beefy knife I mean look at it holy crap um, the one thing that I noticed right away is, although uh, and Farad has assured me that the silicon nitride ceramic detent ball isn't likely or is probably never going to wear out because it's that much harder than the steel. And it might slowly, as I open and close it or use it, wear its own path onto the blade tang or um, where its own detent path and you can almost hear and it might sound gritty but it's not it's just the nitride um, the silicon nitride ceramic ball riding over the hot rolled finish on the flats um, somebody on the forum said he smoothed out the flats um, along the detent path and it helped a lot with getting it to slide open or um, open smoother but I have no problem with the ball riding along that I guess uneven surface but it's 
It's nothing to worry about as, as, as far as what Farad has assured me. I might try to round the spine a little. Um, it's cool to see all the grind marks and I'm sure he, I'm, I'm sure Farad spent many hours and many belts um, finishing this project up. He made his own personal K2 folder out of the same steel and he polished the flats on his and it took him a very long time to do that. It is just, the steel is just designed to be that wear resistant. So I don't know how long it's going to take to smooth out or round out the spine, but I can try and I guess slowly work myself up to it. Um, it is a carbon steel. It will rust and oxidize as freely as any of the other carbon steels out there. Um, you just have to I guess maintain it as normal. Um, I, have, I haven't had a problem with CPM M4 and I have a few other knives with the same steel and I haven't had any problems with rust that everybody seems to be concerned about. Although this has a force patina on it which kind of protects it from any type of corrosion. I have a couple of Gale Bradleys that also have CPM M4 and the blades are fine. You know, I just, I have a, um, I guess, obsessive compulsive way of wiping my knives down after work, after using them, which everybody should. You should treat your tools and maintain them properly if you want them to last or if you want them to keep looking good. Um, and that just goes along with um, almost any other steel, whether it's stainless or not. I keep them in a nice dry place, um, wipe them down fairly often. I, I don't leave them wet. Although one time I did leave my Gail Bradley out on the chopping board after I sliced some mangoes with it and it started to form a very light darkening on the surface which I think the CPM Rex is also going to do uh, if, you tr if you're slicing you know acidic foods or Anything that has any kind of level of moisture to it, you just have to wipe it down. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can maybe also try to polish out the flats. Although I have no idea what that's going to involve as far as my part and considering the limited um, equipment that I have or hardly any I only have the paper wheels but overall this knife one of my grails he has um, a a K2 in S90V Damascus that he's selling and I'm gonna go to Vegas next month Maybe I'll get lucky there, and if that's still available, I'm definitely going to jump on it. That blade is also beautiful. It's smooth, and with, with the Damascus Sanmai over the S90V, oh, he has pictures of it, and it's amazing. But this, I mean, as far as having something superlative in your knife collection, or I guess EDC rotation, I can say this is probably the hardest blade steel um, available out there. I mean short of making something from I guess solid tungsten or whatever but that would be too brittle. But as as Farad said it's about 68 on the flats at the spine which is about 70 on the edge and man I saw a Rockstead knife at, I think it was 67, 66, 67 HRC and with their, I think it was ZDP or it might have been the other steel that they use. Um, that, that chop, I mean that sliced very finely but then again those knives are well over the thousand dollar range. Um, I think for a one-off project in a super steel like this. And Farad says he's never gonna work with 
we're never gonna make the K2s and CPM Rex 121 ever again and I don't blame them um, this is I would say one of my truly once in a lifetime acquisitions as far as knives I really like the design I the the way we cut out for the lock bar is one of the trademarks he has for his K2s it's I don't know how he does that water jet probably sends the slabs out to get water jetted and cut um, but the steel is all him oh my god love this knife I like big beefy titanium frame locks um, almost any big folder I mean I, I don't care how big it is I'll carry it I carried a ZT200 for a long time and the ZT200 is dwarfed by this and the ZT200 is a lot shorter than the titanium military or the spider core military and this is even bigger but um hey I'm still gonna carry it although it's it's most likely gonna be in a more casual situation and formal situation um, but anyway that's that Farad K2 CPM Rex 121 I'll see you guys next time